So this is uh, um, the slides for the session that was run on online forms to support learning. So I'm going to go through 10 examples of potential uses of online forms, which you can pause and read there. So I'm not going to read through them all. And the first one is where you want to try and find out pre-knowledge, uh, what existing knowledge somebody has in your class before they come in. So use this obviously with um, primary school teachers to find out how confident they are in primary in science and technology before doing an in-service course. And for those people who attended this online session, there was a, a, a Google form that was sent out to um, try and assess what people's existing experience was with online forms before trying to um, teach granny to suck eggs or completely confuse people because it was well beyond where they were at. So, you know, trying to work out where people are at. And the results from those sort of um, uh, questionnaires can be demonstrated as bar charts and um, pie charts and things to give a, a real picture as to what your intended audience is going to be uh, able to do before you start trying to um, make them any better at it. Second example is using uh, online forms to ask questions about video. Here's a video about um, the vomit comet or zero G plane, and there were questions asked for second years um, to just keep them on track on track with that. Okay. And third example is using images. So uh, quite often, exam questions or past paper questions have very limited black and white graphics. Using an online form allows you to have much better quality images, much more relevant um, images, so a lot more of relevance to the world of work and bit more applications based, so to increase the relevance of our subject. Then the images within Microsoft Forms can actually um, be limited in terms of Creative Commons licenses, so they've got the correct copyright and you're not infringing copyright. One of the things is that um, the images can only be uploaded um, on, in some cases and have to be just image files or JPG or PNG files. So you might need to use a graphics package to actually crop or to manipulate. And, you know, as I've said already, be careful with the copyright that you're not infringing copyright. So various options for images are that you can just take a, screen, a screenshot or scan. You can, on the top right hand here, I've got um, the laser pointer on. Um, so this is an example of using a drawing package for a graphic that I couldn't get on Google image search. Or if push comes to shove and you haven't got time and you want something particular, then you can just hand draw it and then photograph it and then upload it. Or if you do have time, then you can use a document package like Microsoft Word or uh, Google Docs, type out what you're after and then upload that. Make sure that your image is clear enough um, because some pupils may be looking at this on their phones. The other thing is giving a, an online form during an actual lesson where you're trying to check for understanding as the lesson progresses. Again, this will depend on your students' access to devices. You may be lucky enough to have one device per learner in the classroom, or you may be teaching a senior class where just about everybody has a smartphone on them with access to data. And at that point, you can ask very easy, very straightforward questions just to check on actual um, understanding. So in this case, this is for simple harmonic motion, uh, trace of a simple harmonic motion, and just asking wh where the maximum displacement is, where the maximum velocity, where the change in direction is, all these sort of what we think are similar, well, what we think are simple things and assumed knowledge often in when they start to do exam questions, but it's just a case of drilling that down in a very convenient way. When you are doing these, then you can Obviously, keep repeating until you get a better understanding. And if you do want to duplicate questions, there is a copy function in both Google and Microsoft Forms to use the same set of multiple choice answers for different STEM questions. And number five is just, you know, at the end of some learning to check on uh, just a very simple exit ticket test. And again, you can see with the graphical um, summary of the test how well your class actually understood the lesson that you've done. So in this case, I've got that graphed out here and it wasn't a brilliant lesson by the looks of things because some of them are not getting anywhere near full marks. So maybe either that or maybe the questions were poor questions. And you can see which questions were the most frequently missed. 
this is the one that most people know online forms for and it's uh, just taking past paper multiple choice questions usually and allowing people the chance to run through a large number of multiple choice questions and then get instant feedback because they're self-marking quizzes. So in both the Google and Microsoft platforms, so Google Forms and Microsoft Forms, you have the option to make the online form a quiz where you can give points values and you can give um, correct answers. And in both platforms, you can give feedback as to why the question was wrong and what would the correct what the correct answer would be. Andrew Bailey has collected dozens of these in Microsoft Forms on the IOP resource website. The, the resource sheet. So you'll see that up here I'm giving examples. These links are to uh, the actual examples of forms. They're all Google Forms because that's the platform I personally use, but there, anything that's possible in Google Forms, almost anything, is possible in Microsoft Forms. So both have their advantages. This one is the idea of a sort of breakout room where you've got various stages to go through and it depends on your answers to one as to where you go next and the way you would do a breakout room. Um, so this is using branching forms or having multiple sections which I'm going to come back to in just a moment. So the main thing is if you're giving an answer in words then you've got to offer the correct answers being in upper and lower case. So you can see down here Rubidium's done three ways and even then you're so assuming that they're going to be able to spell the words correctly. So um, longer text answers are difficult in forms. Generally, a, a multiple choice is better. Once you've done a period of learning, then using a survey or an online form to evaluate that is really useful, especially for people uh, who are earlier in their career or if you've just initiated a new course or a new resource. Very quick and um, even across a whole year group to get feedback it takes a um, a group of learners only a couple of minutes to do a well-constructed form and it can be almost as quick for you to pull together the evidence from that. So you know always good to use scales which have got numbers because then you can analyze numbers in terms of data on the output spreadsheet. Both Google Forms and Microsoft Forms will output their data to a spreadsheet so you can then analyze it even further. This is the sort of data that we got from a, a, a recent interaction with our local employer, LifeScan Scotland, and so over 200 pupils um, gave their thoughts on the online sessions as an on online form, and that was uh, allowed us to show the, both the employer, the, both the local company and our senior management team how well the sessions had run. And our school management is obviously using the um, online forms as well because they're finding it's a really good way to get data on their learning and teaching, uh, very much with an eye to any future HMIE inspection, um, because HMIE does seem to be quite fixated on data at the moment. And so if you've got good evidence of attainment or through or um, views of pupils through online forms, then the easy analysis of the data from your online forms is going to be um, well received, I would hope. And there's no reason why online forms are just the prerogative of the teachers. Make sure that you, if you do have the opportunity, either through um, Microsoft or Google Forms through Glow, people should have access to be able to make these forms themselves and can therefore ask questions to survey either their families or other pupils. And so here's a couple of examples, you know, finding out about ver variation for uh, in biology or recycling survey for um, sustainability. Last, um, penultimately here, we've got um, just in terms of administration, anything that streamlines administration will improve learning and teaching because you've got more time to do better learning and teaching. So I consider it to be a justification. Uh, this is using forms to get, get information from people and in a quick and very reliable way because again, the information gathered generates a spreadsheet and therefore you can work with the data on the spreadsheet. This is our science technicians way of uh, booking equipment. You fill in an online form and you can see here that there's different sections and as soon as you fill in the course that you want then you only have options for those particular uh, courses and so it limits what you're, being, what you're ordering. So you don't have a massive long list of experiments. It's 
targeted per course and that's done through branching forms which we'll come back to in just a moment and then the technicians analyze the spreadsheet and then all the bookings are on a shared calendar which means that everybody both the technicians can see exactly what's ordered for that week and other people can see if there's any pinch points where people are trying to use the same bit of equipment in two different rooms lastly um, if you've got pupils who are using an SQA digital paper for their prelims and their May exams, setting up a digital paper for more routine assessment is difficult. And so we're using a blank answer Google form to for them to put in their longer answers on a locked uh, Chromebook. So this only works if you've got managed Chromebooks and the local authority is uh, brought into the whole sort of Google system with Chromebooks. What that does is it actually locks out any other internet access while that form is open. And so they can't use the Chromebook to access other content while they're putting in their answers here. So it's just a way of them typing in those longer answers because most people using a digital form will still do the calculations. It's just the more wordy questions. But you can still do the same thing with Microsoft Forms, just keeping an eye that they don't have another tab or window open. So this session is not a how-to, it's more a case of what's possible type um, presentation. I hope I've given you some ideas for how other ways that you could use online forms. And in terms of creating quizzes, I've given two options here for how to use Microsoft, how to set up Microsoft Forms, a YouTube link there and Google quizzes there, a YouTube link down here. And similarly, how to get spreadsheets with the data that you can export from the online form. There's the Microsoft version. And well, I couldn't actually find a video because it's so straightforward in Google, you just to create spreadsheet. So, and uh, I've had recommended this Mike Tolson's website with um, 20 different tips for Microsoft forms um, by Andrew Bailey. Branching forms. Very few of us on the call when we, when we did this had actually made extensive use of branching forms. They are time consuming to set up properly, but once you do, then it obviously can give you a lot more power in terms of where, how people's progress through the form, depending on whether they're confident with something and they get correct answers, you can send them on to more difficult questions. If they're finding things difficult, then you can take, put them back through more remediation questions. So again, Microsoft version and a Google version with two YouTube clips for those there. In terms of sharing forms, and this is where Microsoft definitely owns it. Uh, when you open a form, it gives you a chance to create your own copy and put it in your own online uh, cloud account. Couldn't be easier. Uh, Google, you've got to be added as a collaborator and then make a copy and it's, yeah, it's all there, but it's not as easy and it's got to be done by the actual author of the form so you can't just take one that's there. So things that we found that we liked about forms is that once you've invested the time, you can use them again and again each year. And so you can share them with other colleagues. So if somebody does one for um, an electric electricity topic, somebody else could do it for our dynamic universe and swap them around. And the great thing is that you can use them on any device. You don't need to have to log into a Glow and a Google account to be able to use the form once it's shared and published. And they can be duplicated and you can edit them if mainly on Microsoft. It's a good way if you've got a larger department or working across schools to share the load for producing this kind of formative assessment. And it's great for homeworks where people may not have the online access in school, but you can set these as homeworks. Difficulties are that um, if we're still in this VHS Betamax world where you can't actually convert between Microsoft Forms and Google Forms or, back or either way. Um, do all learners have access to a device so they can all use the form? And the lack of any way of both presenting or inputting rich te um, text such as subscripts and symbols for equations and questions. In setting the question, the easiest thing is just to put in an image file which has got all the correct symbols and equations. If you want to type something in, you can use this website, Symbol Salad, and just copy and paste each subscript or symbol as you go, and it will appear on your form quite nicely. There are other ways using Windows um, keyboard sh shortcuts as well. 